It's the early afternoon and it's already over 100 degrees. And I'm going to a baseball game tonight for Father's Day. Because nothing says I love my son quite like heat stroke. Hey everybody, welcome to uh, CIT 12 online for the summer in a six week session. I'm not gonna lie to you, that is 18 weeks worth of material crammed into six weeks. It's going to be kind of busy. Every week you should be able to expect one of these videos to kind of tell you what's going on in the week. Um, however, this week's is gonna be a little bit longer because we're gonna talk about the class in general plus what we're gonna do in week one. Now for questions about policies, grading schemes, etc. Uh, just read the syllabus. There's a link in Canvas. It'll take you to the syllabus. It'll answer all those questions. Um, I may pull out a few things just to sort of highlight. Really what I want to do is tell you what you need to do in order to succeed in the class. Um, kind of what the weekly pace is going to be, what I sort of expect from you each week, those sorts of things. So let's start out with my IT lab. My IT lab is the office software simulation type thing that we use uh, for all of our CIT 12 and 15 classes. Uh, the software essentially allows us to provide the simulated lab environments where you can learn how to use all of the different features in the programs that we'll be covering. Um, it also allows us to do assessments, etc. It's going to be used for your labs, for your practical exams, and even for the final exam. So without my IT lab, you really can't succeed in the class. Um, however, my IT lab is just a digital product. You can buy it direct from Pearson. You can get a, a card with a book in the bookstore if you want to. Um, but all you need is just that digital code. Inside of my IT lab, you'll actually find digital copies of all the textbooks that we use for the class. Both the lab book, which you probably won't use a ton because it's built into the my IT lab simulations, uh, but also the textbook that we use for quizzes and concept type questions. Um, so you'll probably want to get that. Regardless, if you just buy my IT lab, you get all of it for about 80-ish bucks. By the way, my IT lab has a 14-day free trial. Um, this is really helpful if you don't have the money here in week one to buy my IT lab. If you don't have the money, it's a six-week course. Everything is super condensed. Don't wait. Uh, waiting is going to hurt you. Uh, instead, use the 14-day free trial. You'll get two weeks. Hopefully, you'll get the money by then. You'll be able to purchase it. Everything will be great, uh, but you won't have to wait to start doing your you can start doing your work today if you want to, all right? So be sure to register for my IT lab as soon as possible. And like most things in this class, there is a video with directions on how to register for my IT lab in Canvas in the week one module. Speaking of modules, that's kind of the next topic. Uh, what do you need to do each week in order to succeed in the class? The way to do this is to go into the Canvas course and go to modules. Inside of each module, you'll find a week, or I guess the modules are weeks. So there is a week one module that you should see right now. You can just go through that module step by step and just consider it a to-do list. Just do all of the things listed there and you will succeed. I mean, that's exactly what I expect from you. Um, so every single week you'll see those modules and you'll just sort of get into a pace. You know, hopefully you'll sort of know what it is you need to do and you'll kind of be able to expect it. You'll sort of know what time in your week you can carve out for things and you'll just get stuff done. We sort of think of things in weeks. So week one starts on Monday, it ends Sunday at midnight, or I should say Sunday at 11.59 p.m., so the very last minute of Sunday. Um, once it becomes Monday, that week is done. Um, theoretically, the due date for all assignments is at the end of that week. And so you really wanna find time during the week to get all of those things accomplished. I know it's gonna be a lot, especially in summer because everything is so condensed. You're doing three weeks worth of work every single week. But at the same time, um, hopefully we've made some streamlined changes that will make things a little easier for you. Speaking of the weekly schedule, I kind of have sort of an odd policy about late work. Um, and so I thought I'd explain it here. It's also in the syllabus, but anyway. The idea is that I want you to have some flexibility. It's an online class, so you should have the ability to sort of schedule things as you need. Um, however, there needs to be some hard deadlines. So the idea is that everything that I assign for week one is due at the end of week one, right? Sunday, 11.59 p.m. And you'll see that on all the due dates. But um, those assignments will actually be available for another week after week one. There's essentially a one week grace period on all assignments. 
you don't get something done or if you something took longer than you expected or it's Sunday night you're trying to work on your labs you've gotten you know word lab one and two done but you can't quite get three done and then your kid falls off at a coffee table and breaks their arm I have no idea what the heck's going on in your life but point being when it happens you have the ability to say you know what I got a little extra time I'm just gonna wait till tomorrow and deal with whatever I need to deal with now um, so that's the idea. There's some flexibility, but some hard limits. You have a one week grace period. During that one week, you can turn in anything that you want uh, from the previous week. No problem, uh, no penalty, nothing. It's full credit. Uh, but then after that one week is done, uh, everything disappears and you can no longer turn in assignments uh, from that week. So week one, everything's due at the end of week one. Uh, those week one assignments will be available all during week two so you can turn them in full credit no problem at the end of week two right so 11 59 p.m on sunday of week two all of week one assignments will disappear so you won't have access to those anymore um, and if you haven't done them you'll just get a zero for them um, so there's some hard deadlines but some flexibility within that uh, of course you'll still have all of week two's assignments available through week three etc um, every week we'll have a one week grace period with the exception of the last week, week six for us. Um, week six is actually a short week. It ends on Thursday rather than on Sunday. Um, so I'll try to sneak some of those assignments out early. But regardless, um, that week I'm purposely planning to make it quite light. Uh, you'll probably just have a practical exam and the final exam. So it, it should be a little bit lighter for the last week. But point being the last week is the only week that doesn't have uh, grace period because obviously I need to turn in grades uh, that weekend after it's done. So that's the late policy. Uh, everything you do, uh, do at the end of the week, but you've got an extra week if you need it. There's one other small change that I'm making just for the summer classes. Um, so assignments will disappear as they normally do, but normally I only make assignments appear when they actually start. So week three's assignments would appear in week three. Um, however, in my IT lab, I'm actually making all of the labs and all of the practical exams, everything available to you immediately. Um, it's summer, right? You've probably got plans, you've got things you want to do, I understand that. Um, and so I guess I don't really feel terribly strongly, especially in such a condensed class, of giving you access to stuff early. So remember, things will disappear when they're supposed to disappear. But as of day one, you'll have access to all of the labs, all of the practical exams, um, everything but the final exam in my IT lab. Uh, quizzes will appear with the weeks as normal in Canvas. Um, discussions will appear with the weeks as normal in Canvas. But the vast majority of the time you're going to be spending in this class is probably going to be on labs and practical exams. Um, at least that's been the experience of people in the past. Um, discussions, quizzes, they're relatively quick things. So those things that are going to take a lot of time, you'll have access to them early so you can get them done ahead of time if you want to. Um, maybe you know you've got something going on for Fourth of July weekend. Hey, do a little extra work you know, in the early weeks. Be able to relax on Fourth of July. Your choice. Um, but again, it just offers a little bit more flexibility. And although there may be some you know, moral failing on your part if you turn in stuff late, because how dare you turn in stuff late, um, I don't necessarily know that there's a moral failing if you turn stuff in early. So anyway, you have access to stuff in my IT lab early. Just for the summer, I wouldn't do that normally in a full semester class. All right, so now what are the types of things you'll be seeing in those weekly modules? What are the sorts of things I'm gonna ask you to do? Uh, the first are gonna be readings. Those readings could be in a paper book if you bought one at the bookstore, um, or they could just be in my IT lab using the ebook. Um, the chapters are there, read through them, skim through them at least, uh, get a good sense of kind of what the chapters are on about. And then uh, you'll see mini lectures. Mini lectures are video lectures done by me and discussing topics that are related to the topics that are in the chapters. Um, and so you'll have at least one or two mini lectures uh, per week that kind of mirror the chapters that we're reading that week. In general, we'll probably cover about two chapters a week. This first week, we'll only do one because we've got an extra lab. Uh, just remember, go through the module, look at that, and that'll tell you everything that you need to do. Uh, there'll be quizzes. Quizzes are just multiple choice quizzes taken in Canvas. You can do them as many times as you want until you get the grade that you want. 
Uh, they're meant to be formative in nature, to get you into the textbook, to get you, you know, watching the lectures, etc. So quizzes, um, every week there's one per chapter. Uh, so if we're covering one chapter, one quiz, if there's two chapters, two quizzes. Uh, and they'll cover the stuff in the chapters and in what's in lecture. Then there'll be a discussion. Normally there's a discussion every week tied to every chapter. For summer I'm streamlining a little bit so there'll only be one discussion per week. Um, so you have fewer discussions than you would have in a normal class. Just trying to streamline stuff because I know we're condensing a lot here. Um, so discussions, I have a topic, I'll have some sort of a prompt. You'll see that right there in the discussion. Uh, you won't be able to see other people's posts until you make a post. So look at the prompt, think about it, write your post, and then you'll have you know a comment or what. You'll have your your answer, your your part of the discussion there in uh, the discussion board. Now, once you post yours, you'll be able to see everybody else's. Uh, these are not normally like questions that have a right or wrong answer. They're questions about how you feel about technology or having you do some research about your career, for instance. Um, and so uh, you, don't, you can't really cheat off of other people. But the idea is that once you've made a post, once you've thought about it on your own, now look through other people's posts. Uh, part of the grade for your discussion is making a reply to at least one other person's post. Uh, find somebody who maybe agrees with you, disagrees with you, uh, has a similar interest to you, and say something. Um, that would be awfully nice. Uh, so anyway, that's the uh, discussions. You'll see one per week. And then labs and trainings. Um, labs and trainings, in, our, in this class we really cover, I guess, four programs. We cover Windows very lightly, uh, but we cover Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. Um, that's for the computer literacy class. CIT 15 is a little bit different, but those are the three programs that we really cover. So there will be labs for each of those. Uh, Windows just has one lab. We're going to do it in week one in lieu of a second chapter. Um, but then each of the other programs will have three labs. Uh, by the way, in my IT lab, they're going to be called trainings. Same thing, right? Lab training, same word. I just have not changed the words on there yet. Um, so anyway. There'll be three labs per program. Uh, those are, real, like, you just jump in. Uh, there's a little button that you know, has, like, helpful aids, study aids. Uh, it'll tell you exactly how to do each thing. So it essentially asks you a question. You do it there. You get credit for it. You move on to the next skill. Uh, it might be bold facing a word. It might be moving in the margins. It might be uh, writing a formula in Excel. Whatever the question is, you sort of do it right there in the little simulated program and it moves you on to the next question. The video where I tell you how to register for my IT lab includes at the end a little bit of a demonstration on how to find help, how to actually, you know, see how to do stuff in my IT lab. So be sure to check that out. Um, that being said, those are the labs and trainings. If you have questions, uh, shoot me an email. And then, uh, for this class, the way it works is we're pretty much going to do an entire program's worth of labs in one week, right? So all of Word is going to be in week one, um, plus the Windows lab. So there's four labs in week one. Uh, some of them are kind of short, so it's helpful. But regardless, four labs, a lot of labs. In week two, spoilers, uh, we'll have a practical exam. So that's the other thing. Practical exams are also done in my IT lab. What you do is you download a bunch of files from my IT lab, uh, one of which will be a document that you need to change. It could be an Excel spreadsheet, it could be a Word document, whatever. Um, you take that, you'll get another sheet that has instructions. You may have some other files that are like photos you need to insert into the document. But you look at the instructions and it'll tell you, like step one, uh, change the margin on page one to I don't know, one and a half inches. Whatever the thing is it asks you to do, you go into the document and you change it. And you're doing this in your own version of Microsoft Office. Uh, if you don't have Microsoft Office, don't worry. In week two, I'll have a video showing you how to get it for free as a Fresno City College student. So you'll make the changes to the document. When you're done, you upload that document back to my IT lab and you'll get a grade. As always, in this class, there will be a video showing you how to do that in week two when it comes time for the practical exam. But just so you kind of understand practical exams, this is, your form, this is our assessment to see how well you've learned those skills from training. Uh, there is no guide to kind of tell you what to do in each step, although each of the steps 
exactly mirror the stuff you saw in the trainings, so you could always just jump back into the trainings. Um, but download the files, edit the one file with all the changes based on the instructions, upload that file, it'll be automatically graded, and then I will go through and hand grade it because the computer always gets stuff wrong. Oh, almost forgot the final exam. The final exam is just in the last week of class. Uh, we'll make it available for a certain number of days, and it's essentially just a really big quiz. So multiple choice questions pulled from the exact same pools. It's standardized, so every CIT 12 student across the entire campus will be taking the exact same test. Um, yeah, it's just our way of doing it. So regardless, that's the final exam. Uh, just picture it as a really big quiz. All right, so enough about the class in general. Let's talk about uh, what we're going to do here in week one. Okay, so in week one, we've got uh, chapter one that we're covering. We're only doing one chapter this week. We've got an extra lab, so that makes up for it. Uh, but chapter one is all about change. Uh, there is a mini lecture on change, so take a look at that. Um, we sort of discuss change in general te as technology changes stuff. Here's the thing. That's a cliche, right? Technology changes stuff, everything changes stuff. The question is, how is it changing stuff? Do you know um, how technology is moving, what sorts of things are changing, and can you use that information to make good decisions for your life? Um, you, you're going to hear stories. Uh, the, the latest one is gonna be self-driving cars, which will be a topic in week two, spoilers. Um, but self-driving cars. There are people right now learning to drive like semi-trucks, right? They're learning to become truckers. This is a terrible career decision, right? Based on what we know and where technology is going, we know that driving is something that's probably better done by a machine. Again, spoilers for week two, you can make your own decision in week two. But at the very least, we know that's a job sector that is really threatened. So. You don't want to be studying that. You don't want to put your, your eggs in that basket for a future career. Rather, you'd want to choose something different. Um, and so that's the idea. Uh, change, everything changes stuff, right? But uh, how do you respond to that change? Do you sort of know what sorts of things are likely to be changed by technology and how are they better? Uh, the fact is, when the smartphone came around, we needed fewer secretaries. There are fewer secretaries being hired in the United States than there were in the past. Uh, but there are also more jobs for graphic designers and web programmers. And all of those jobs pay more than the old secretarial jobs. <clears throat> but, you know, they just require some a different set of skills. And so, anyway, point being... Take a look at chapter one, take a look at the mini lecture. Uh, there's a quiz on chapter one, um, and then all of that discussion leads directly into our discussion for the week. So your discussion for the week is navigating the modern economy. Um, essentially, I give you two resources. One looks at college majors, because uh, you know you get a college major, you think, oh, well, that's the career I'm going to choose. Not necessarily. There's a lot of people who have physics degrees that are working in business as management. Um, there's a lot of people who get a degree in something, but they actually work in something else. But if you just look at the value of the degree, uh, the first resource is the Hamilton Project. There's a video showing you exactly how to use it, like everything else in this class. Um, and that, that video will show you how to kind of figure out, based on your major, the major you've chosen, um, kind of what your income, what you could expect your income to be, and to compare it to other majors. Um, obviously, it'll vary by region, but you can play with that. Um, to make sure that now that you're in college, you're really choosing a major where there's not going to be a lot of surprises, right? Um, we need people who are great social workers. We need people who understand early childhood development. Um, the fact that those careers tend to not pay as much as other careers, right, doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. I just don't want you to do it and be surprised. Um, that's the thing we want to avoid, right? You should know going in. Um, this is what I'm choosing. It's a career that I love, and I have a reasonable expectation of what my income is going to be in that career. So anyway, um, yeah.
take a look at that. The second one is actually for occupations, so the actual job that you get. And that's through the state of California. Again, that video shows you exactly how to use that. You can compare careers um, to decide, hey, this thing that I want to do, is it something that is likely going to you know, pay off for me? Is it something that this is like an income or a lifestyle that I'm willing to accept? Um, anyway, lots of comparisons, but take a look at it. The second one, that state of California one, has some really great information on sort of predicting in the next 10 years, how many jobs in, of this type do we expect to see more of in California? Or how many of these jobs do we expect to see less of in California? Um, so you kind of know, am I going into a career that is sort of you know, growing, or am I choosing a career that may be dying off? Um, again, just don't be a truck driver. It's a really bad choice right now. And then finally, in week one, we've got our My IT Labs. So this week, we've got four labs. It's a lot of labs. Uh, just remember, you've got that extra week grace period if you need to shift a couple of them over. But those practical exams take a long time, too. So that's why, that's why we just have the one practical exam for the whole week next week. Um, but regardless, Windows and then all three Word labs are due this week. Um, again, if you want to know how to use My IT Lab, take a look at the end of the registering for My IT Lab video. It'll show you how to use it, how to sort of get the computer to show you, and you know exactly what to do, where to click, how to use each feature. Um, but that's that's what we're doing this week. So all four My IT Labs. That means you're going to need My IT Lab uh, as soon as possible. And that's it for week one. If you have any questions, holler at me, uh, send me an email, or just message me through Canvas. I guess that's the equivalent of an email. Um, and I'll get right back to you. So uh, yeah, hopefully you uh, feel confident about this class. Hopefully you feel confident about technology. If you don't, hopefully you feel a little bit more confident about technology by the end of the class. All right, have a great week, and uh, I'll see you online.